Welcome to Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host. And on this episode, I'll update you on all things that are going to happen for the upcoming week, such as our upcoming episodes on the Prepare Like a Pro podcast. This week's power tip, which I always wrap up the Sunday live chats, or for those listening in the podcast world, our Monday podcast episode for the week at the end of this episode. So make sure to tune in. This week will be on how a AFL key position player can train and prepare for their position. So how they train differently to your small forwards, small defenders, uh, or midfielders. Uh, so for the big fellas out there and big girls out there who want to um, dominate your position and have a better understanding on how you can prepare in the gym and on the field, make sure to listen in for this week's power tip. And of course, announce our uh, weekly Prepare Like a Pro live chat interview that we host uh, every Friday now at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you're listening to this episode, I'd love to see it and I'd always like to see who our guests are, uh, sorry, who our audience is and, and what episodes you're enjoying. So if you're liking the podcast, please screenshot this episode on your phone and share it on your Instagram, tag Prepare Like a Pro. Not only will we share it, but it's always great to see people enjoying our content uh, and I'll make sure we'll give you guys a bit of a shout out as well. This week's round three tips, so, so far a better round than last week. I tipped the doggies over Sydney, which was successful. Melbourne over Essendon, which was successful. Crows over Port Adelaide was wrong. I tipped Port, close game then, and I missed it, but apparently it was an unbelievable game. GWS Giants versus the Suns. Got that one right. Brisbane versus Cats. Got that one right. Tip the Cats. Brisbane versus North Melbourne. Absolute smashing. Uh, Brisbane. Uh, tip that one right. Carlton versus Hawthorne. Just got that right. Carlton just got over. Watched the last quarter of that one. Looked pretty intense. Uh, I was lucky enough as well to help out the AFL game. So my debut AFL game, which was awesome experience. Thanks to the Melbourne Football Club for that. And that was good fun. Good for us to get a win against the Bombers. We had, I also tipped St Kilda against Richmond. I tipped Rich, Richmond to win that game, which I can see the scores now is wrong. And then I've tipped Dockers to beat West Coast. We'll see how that game unfolds. But uh, West Coast have been hit hard again by injuries and the health protocol due to COVID. So um, you'd imagine the Dockers will get up for that one. In terms of this week, round four, Port Adelaide versus the D's on Thursday night. I'm going to tip the D's. Friday night, we've got Geelong versus Lions. This is going to be a ripper. Uh, skilled stadium, I believe, so I reckon the Cats will get up there. Saturday, Sydney versus North. Mm, don't don't think North will get up that one, I reckon. Sydney Swans at home. Collingwood versus West Coast. Collingwood uh, looking good this year, so they've had two wins and a narrow loss to Geelong. They're winning most of the game. I reckon they will beat West Coast. Tigers versus Doggies. Doggies. For that one, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where Tigers go this year. This so, uh, But Doggies had a great win on the weekend. I reckon they will get another W against the Tigers. And then we've got Fremantle versus GWS. They could go either way. Uh, the fact it's in Perth, I'm going to tip Fremantle that one, but that will be close, I reckon. Sunday, we've got Essendon versus Adelaide. I reckon Essendon will get their first win, although that could go either way as well. Hawthorne versus St Kilda. That this one will be tight. Another tight game. I'm tipping Saints for that one, and then Suns versus Carlton. I'm going to tip Suns in an upset in their home game. I reckon. Kind of had three wins now. They're due for a bit of a an off week. In terms of our upcoming podcast this week, we have Chris Perkin, the bite size interview uh, that we did with the Australia's leading high performance facilities as our first live collaborative event in February. Uh, the bite size interview of that, he's the director of West Coast Health and Performance, will be released on Tuesday. So make sure to tune in for that one. We've actually got Chris on the podcast for a one on one interview um, for his whole journey in high performance sport. He's a physiotherapist, so make sure to uh, keep your awareness around that one. That will be uh, in the next few weeks on our YouTube channel for the live chat. This week's Get Better Plan on Wednesday will be how to use objective data to measure power development. So it'll be good for the strength and conditioning coaches out there as well. Um, no doubt you'll be well versed with uh, velocity-based training. 
So some methods that I've used in the past with athletes, but also for the athletes out there, some simple apps that you can use on your phone uh, to track the velocity of the bar, um, but also some just important practical actionable things that you can use in your training to improve your power development. So make sure to listen in on Wednesday. Our Friday live chat. So for those um, that aren't aware, we're going to move our, uh, I forgot forgot to get the footy out for the the tips. We're going to move this week's um, and going forward for the season of footy. We're going to move our live chats to from Thursdays to Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Australia East Stand Time. So we're going to have Sean Baker on this week, the founder of Peak Performance. That's a massive facility in Adelaide doing great things. So really looking forward to sharing Sean's journey. We had a snippet um, of of Sean and, and his background and knowledge uh, in the Bite Size interview. He was one of the guests in the Australian leading high performance facilities. So really looking forward to having Sean on. And we'll go into a little bit more detail around his career journey and uh, share his philosophy. So for all the Australian industry coaches as well as developing athletes, make sure to tune in on our YouTube channel at 8.30 p.m. And if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, that would be super. Our uh, episode for Friday's podcast will be Tim Schlager, the Director of Sports Clinic Melbourne, another bite-sized interview. So make sure to tune in for that one. And we've got Tim on as well. He's been on the podcast for a one-on-one. So if you like the bite size, make sure to tune in for his full episode. I'm going to move over to Instagram now and answer this week's questions. We've got two, one from Ray Simmons and one from Mitch. G'day, Instagram. Uh, It's Jack here from Prepare Like a Pro, just updating you all things on the podcast for our Sunday show. So let's get straight into it. I've got the footy out because we do our weekly tips now, now that the football season has started. And uh, why not get the the sharing out when you've got a brand new one? So for those tuning in live, make sure if you've got any questions or queries, good to see Gus, D supporter, uh, tuning in. Send them through via hitting the question button at the bottom of your screen. We've got two questions that have been sent through via the Instagram stories. First one is from Ray Simmons, uh, who just watched the uh, Kicking Coaches YouTube video, loved it, but no Kevin Ball. Yeah, so for those that watched the live um, collaborative event we had on Thursday, uh, unfortunately, Kevin Ball, he's working in Spain at the moment on a special project for Fever Soccer and the reception internet was no good at the time, so he was a late out, uh, unfortunately. But if you do love Kevin's work and you're into improving your kicking technique, make sure to listen in. We had a full episode with Kev not long ago on the Prepare Like a Pro podcast. So he didn't make the Collaborative event, but you can listen in uh, there for the uh, interview that we had with Kevin a little while ago. And we'll definitely do a a live Collaborative event again and get Kevin on board. the next question was from Mitch. Just want to know your thoughts about the use of creatine and its use in AFL, understanding the pros and cons of using it and the associated weight, water weight as a result. And this is the beneficial of carrying, is this the beneficial with carrying extra kilos? Thanks in advance. Big fan. Thanks for your question, Mitch. And sorry for the delay getting back to you. I saw this, I was just going through our direct messages and I thought I'd add it into this week's segment. So, you can get a better answer. Um, in terms of creatine, we for, for whatever reason, there's responders and non-responders. So the only way you can really work that out is through trial and error. So I, I'm a fan of creatine for those that want to gain a little bit of um, power in their training or speed development or strength, any of our anaerobic dominant um, uh, uh, training focuses that we're trying to get out of from our training, um, then Creatine can be a helpful supplement. Of course, it's supplementing, so it's not going to move the needle, so to speak, and be a make a huge impact on your training. But it might allow you to get that extra rep done at a, at a high speed, or maybe lift with a little bit more uh, weight on the bar. Um, so it might give you that extra little bit of boost that gives you a stronger stimulus. So if you use it to work harder in the gym over a period of time, sure, you're going to get. Uh, some better training stimulus out of that. So definitely thumbs up for creatine. Make sure it's batch tested if you're using it. So you can do that by checking at the back of the label um, just to make sure you prevent. G'day, Andy. Good to see you tuning in, mate. Another win by the Casey boys. Well done. 
Um, hope you're recovering well. But yeah, Mitch, uh, use the creatine. It, do, it will have, of course, added water weight like you mentioned. So we naturally store creatine around 50, everyone's a bit different, but about 50% naturally um, in our muscles. And uh, creatine just allows you to top up those natural stores. So it is something the body produces. And, and by supplementing the powder form uh, with your protein shake or first thing in the morning, however you want to do it, um, you're just topping up that energy store. And then, of course, you've got to then apply that in your weights program to get the um, adaptation that you want. So there's no point supplementing creatine and then not putting in the work. You're not going to see anything change other than the added water weight. Um, so, yeah, but in terms of the adverse reactions, they're usually digestive issues that people have had. And then some people just don't get any benefits from it from an athletic point of view. And they're the non-responders, like I mentioned uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no research that has worked out why they're responders and why they aren't. If for anyone listening in live or anyone that's uh, listening in the podcast world that is aware of some research in that space, please uh, email it through to me at jack at preparelikeapro.com. But uh, overall, Mitch, give it a go. Uh, see how you respond to it. Make sure you follow a creatine loading phase. That's where we're trying to top up your own muscle stores by having um, an extra dose of your creatine. Okay, Rossi, how you going, mate? Extra dose of creatine, uh, so you're getting two hits of it over a day for the for seven days as your loading phase. Then you might supplement it for six, seven weeks where you just have one scoop uh, as your maintenance phase, and then I would recommend having at least four weeks off it just so you, you don't um, – you don't, your body just doesn't get used to it and you, um, you actually have a bit of a deload off the supplements like we deload in your, in your training as well. So cycle it on, cycle it off, really, really important and just see how, what results and if it works for you. Um, like I mentioned before, some people have some, they're non-responders from an athletic point of view or they get um, some negative effects in terms of their guts that just upsets their stomach. So obviously if it does that, it's not worth the benefits um, which are going to be quite... Uh, small. So if they don't allow you to feel good as a footballer uh, and you feel like you've got sore guts, that can affect your energy, it's going to affect your concentration and that's not worth it. So, But if you feel good on it and you feel like it's helping you get that little bit of edge, then 100% go for it. So that's it this week, guys, in terms of live chat, uh, live questions. Stick around for this week's uh, power tip, which I'll mention in a few minutes. But going back to the podcast now, anyone listening in on Instagram, if you've got any questions, just send them my way and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but in terms of program update, the key at the moment, this is typically when footballers will drop off their training. So we want to keep that strength base up. And that's where it's really important to keep three gym sessions a week, even if it's a six-day break. And that might mean that you're only in the gym for a 30-minute session, but the intensity is high, um, the quality of movement's high. Um, so we've got that intentional practice within that 30 minutes. It's not fluffy. And that way you'll still keep your strength base that you built over off-season, pre-season. And that's because we want to be strong at the pointy end of the season, the final September. That's where it's most contested uh, and that's where the pressure gets up uh, at its highest. So we want to make sure we've got that body armor and we've got that strength to win that contested ball. So if you drop off your strength program now, um, it's going to make it really hard to integrate it back in in the later part of the year. Because um, as we know, that's where the muscles will, will get sore when we um, we get out of routine. So keep up three gym sessions a week, commit to 30 minutes, uh, and I guarantee you'll go a long way in your performance for not only recovering from games from week to week um, by building resilience, but also from a performance point of view at the point of the end of the year, you've kept up the uh, good work that you did over the off-season, pre-season, and maybe even made some strength gains or power gains. Um, that would be an added, added bonus if you actually get stronger and more powerful in season which is definitely possible. From a um, speed-bound point of view, we're going to introduce those on Thursdays as a pre-training primer on your main session of the week. Um, so we'll, we'll do that as a bit of a test that's on for those on our online high-performance program. That's basically a 30-meter test where you do the least amount of bounds as possible and you do it for time, and then we work out your speed-bound score. So that's something that we're going to try and improve by September as a way of improving your, your power. From a conditioning point of view, really important that we keep up that sprint distance, that chronic weekly average over the last four weeks. We want to try and keep that topped up. So if you didn't get what we need to get on the on game day for those wearing GPS, then we'll, we'll get a little bit of extra strides in on the Thursday and hopefully you get a bit of sprinting in your main training as well. Um, from a 
area of focus at the moment. We've got some extra flexibility and core work and some extra yoga sessions and home strength programs that you can do through our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not on our program, I'll add the um, free workouts in our show notes so you can follow those. My partner's a yoga teacher, so she's the one doing the yoga classes, and then I'm doing the body weight strength workouts that I did uh, during lockdown to help everyone get through that phase. That was in 2020, so I've still got all the videos on our YouTube channel, so if you're interested, um, click the link in our show notes and you can watch those. Oh, you can, of course, join our program as well for a 14-day free trial by heading over to preparelikeapro.com. Thank you for this week's uh, review from Dakota. This podcast is great to listen to pre or post game. By listening to this podcast, not only has it helped me improve my game, um, but it's also helped improve specific skills and inspired me to push myself. The guests have incredible insight about preparing and improving their game. One of my favorite podcasts. Thank you so much, Dakota. We really love reading these reviews. It goes a long way in boosting my motivation towards uh, making sure we're getting great guests and great content out to you all. Uh, and also it, it's a great way to give us some feedback on um, what you all are liking. So in terms of is it psychologists, is it coaches, athletes? Um, so if you have a favorite episode on the Prepare Like a Pro podcast, write a review about it and let us know all about what you liked. Um, and we'll make sure to try and replicate more episodes like that. You can also rate now on Spotify as well. So if we could, if you could give us a iTunes and Spotify review, that would be massive and it helps us also reach more people. As I mentioned, this week's power tip is on all about AFL key position players. So in the weights room, we want to make we want to respect the fact that you're going to have longer levers. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't move through full range of motion, um, but typically we might need to adjust things, particularly for the uh, the giants. So um, that's where box squats, popping up those box squats, can be re- excuse me can be really helpful. Um, using lifting mats uh, from a trap bar deadlift, using blocks for our bench press. Um, so these tools, safety pins, can be really, really helpful um, and making sure we're not compromising the athlete but we're focusing on um, maintaining good range of motion in our core lifts and and making sure that the athlete feels comfortable lifting heavy for uh, the focus of that exercise, which is force production. So um, using those tools in the gym is really, really helpful and having the awareness of how to use those tools is really, really, really important. So. Um, like I mentioned, just because you're tall doesn't mean you can't move, you can't deadlift off from the ground and doesn't mean you can't do full range back squats uh, or full range bench press. But just be aware if you've got longer levers, obviously the distance that, that that you have to travel is a lot further than someone that's a lot shorter than you. So um, potentially we don't need to move through that full range of motion to get the stimulus that we're looking for, whether it be increasing your strength for your fend off or increasing your muscle mass Um if we need to use those tools, then that can help keep your body healthy and also improve your performance by getting those uh, by being able to lift heavier through those ranges. Um, if you need help around this area on how to use safety pins, just make sure to direct message us, and um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. We've also got some, a few demos on our YouTube channel that you can check out that hopefully will help you on how to set up these exercises. From a um, basic progression point of view. I find, in my experience working with key position players, typically we won't move the exercises around as much. So less variety to be able to allow the athletes to build um, more of a strength um, base uh, on those key exercises. So by us not moving the exercises around as much and having that consistency of movement pattern, the athletes will be able to get uh, stronger at those movements and that's really a key focus for a key position player because there's a lot the physicality of those positions and playing on the biggest players on the field it's so important that we're getting that extra external load compared to someone else who's playing in a smaller position is more dynamic and we might be focusing more on things like movement technique or um, power so for these guys and girls we want to make sure that they're super strong so stick with the movements stick with the compound lifts and don't change them around as, as often so if you change your compound lifts six weeks for, for the normal group, these, these people you might change them around maybe every 10 weeks so they get an extra uh, extra few weeks on that key lift like the box squat, trap bar deadlift and, and bench press prone row, for example. And that way they're going to become stronger over time at those key lifts. And, of course, we might be sacrificing a few 
extra exercises, but at least we're getting them stronger. I also keep the movements a lot uh, simpler. They're not as um, complex like weightlifting, like movements like cleans. Due to uh, the bar does travel a lot more, coordination can be a lot harder with the longer limbs. So keeping the movements nice and simple so that way the athletes can have uh, good intent and, and move explosively uh, in those mo- in those power-based movements. I think instead of doing like a power clean, uh, which might put their shoulders in a compromised position or their wrists, uh, or just simply is a bit awkward to coordinate the bar, they might just do a trap bar jump instead, re- a counter-movement jump to get that rate of force development. From a player's perspective, they typically jump a lot more on the field by doing extra craft work um, with their coaches as well as just pre- and post-training, So, and they're heavier athletes as well. So I try and keep the volume right down uh, and stick away from your more advanced plyometrics like depth jumps and focus more on landing mechanics and stability in the ankle and hip as a replacement from doing lots of bounds and, and uh, more advanced plyometrics. So that's a general philosophy, uh, not right or wrong. Obviously, some athletes, you need to add in that um, in, in those players, and, and they might not be as heavy, uh, or they might find it really helps their performance. And, of course, you'll adjust that philosophy to suit the athlete. But just in generally speaking, I wouldn't do as many players with the bigger-based athletes as the smaller ones. Um, as I mentioned before, ultimately lifting heavy with appropriate range for these athletes is the key focus in the gym area. In terms of on the field, lots of footwork to improve coordination, using our arms and legs uh, to help us move efficiently and ultimately increase our movement competency in running so we're efficient runners because they are do- doing a lot more work in terms of the weight that they're carrying. So we want to make sure they're moving really smoothly. They've got good rhythm with their running technique uh, both in linear speed, lateral movement, but also the aerobic running where their feet are staying close to the ground. Coordinating longer limbs can typically take longer for tall athletes. Therefore, the extra dedicated time pre and post doing like ladder drills, footwork, and um, change of direction drills like agility can be really, really helpful for uh, these type of athletes, particularly helping the ruckman as well as the uh, key forwards, key backs be able to build that separation using their feet, electricity in the feet. So they're not always relying on their on their strength. They can also get separation with their leg speed and repeat leg speed. Wrestling, because of the physicality of the position, that's an uh, added area. So in the off season, if they, can, if they can get access to a wrestling coach, I think that can really help build their competitiveness and aggressiveness on the field, which will really help their performance in those key positions when you're playing on the big, biggest players. You need that as well as um, learning to transfer the strength we're building in the gym onto the field, which there is a real difference between lifting heavy and strong in the gym compared to being strong on the field and using that, using your whole body against another body is is a completely different skill set and one that you need to practice. So wrestling can be really, really important. Uh, And I hope all these areas, both in the weights room, the key focuses in terms of plyometrics, movement patterns uh, on the field, doing that extra footwork and, and technique and running rhythm work and then the wrestling work. I hope this all helps. If you have any questions or queries, obviously this is just general advice. It's not individualized to you. But if you have any questions or queries or you want to check out our online program that has some of this stuff involved, uh, make sure to head over to our website, preparelikeapro.com, where you can get a 14-day free trial. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next episode. And we will be having... Ben Stanley on the podcast Thursday, uh, Friday, sorry, at 8.30 p.m. I'll see you guys then.